Yo, what is going on? But once again, bros, women, bronies, and pegs. This is the one, the only, of course, Mr. Nintendo Switch Free 2011, AK Christian Guy 2009. Of course, you guys remember the interest channel. If you want to do the end of it, check out Fandom.com. Of course, we're going to do that. If you want to press the channel, the man who resigned their picture, specifically made just for you. I put links to all their social media networking accounts in the description box down below. And of course, our business partnership program. Best partnership I ever had. Definitely found on Google as well. Excuse me. I actually had to burp a little bit. I actually had the first time in three months probably on uh, root beer it's been a little while since i had that but anyways um before i begin one real small like <laughs> completely non-related um news to this um article that i'm about to read i know this has nothing to do at all with um <laughs> sony or anything but it has something to do with a lot of pc games and xbox one and microsoft games that they have with sony of course by the way with all their other competitors out there but um I know a lot of you people know about Star Wars and Battlefront games and all those um, PC online games. A lot of people say PC is the master race of freaking MMORPGs, which couldn't be more further than the truth, but it is what it is. You know, um, I could kind of agree with them in that way. There's a couple of PC games I'm really interested in, and I play every once in a while frequently, every now and then. <laughs> but I will say this um, Star Wars is actually going to be like a big giant tourist attraction. They've already had it before with Disneyland, but now they're going to put one in Disneyland, Disney World. With a lot more theme park rides and a crap ton more of um, merchandise they're going to be selling from the George Lucas film itself, from Star Wars, the whole giant franchise. Which I'm a big ass fanboy of Star Wars, if you haven't known. Now you know. <laughs> uh, Star Trek's okay, but I'm not that crazy about it. But, anyways, real excited to hear about that. They're going to have a 3D simulation ride along with an actual physical ride. I think it's going to be called like the Drop or whatever. It's like one of those slingshot rides that go up and down like that. So, um, I'm not sure what kind of theme it's going to be. One of my things is going to be with the Caliber, so I'm really hyped as shit to see that freaking um, theme park for Disney World and Disneyland to finally think, start um, being rebuilt by the time it's 2016. It's going to be um, completely finished, the project will be over, and I could finally enjoy that shit. If I ever go out to Cali to Disneyland, which is only four hours away, I'll be able to enjoy myself, and I cannot wait until the grand opening of that, that side of Disney. That's going to be insane as hell. The hype is going to be real, especially a shit ton of Star Wars fans like myself. I am going to be extremely happy. I'm going to be fanning the hell out when I see the amazing theme park ride that they have for the Star Wars department. It's going to be insane. Anyways, yeah, just a little heads up. It's going to be coming in 2016. And I think it's 2019, 2020 when the whole Nintendo theme land part is going to be <laughs> um, kind of the exact same like same thing like Universal Studios Orlando, Florida is. But on a way more bigger scale, a shit ton more of a bigger scale. Without further ado, let's begin, and I'll start reading this article pretty soon. So, uh, yeah, here we go. So I actually found this news through a little bit more of a different resource. It's called from, um, huh, let's see. I'm trying to remember what the name was. Um, the person I wrote it, though, was um, John Raider. So shout out to him that made this. I actually have, like, a... A YouTube channel called Nintendo Life, Life Report. I think that's what it was. And uh, along with their um, official website, I'm going to leave it in the description box below if you want to read it. It's real small. It's more of a video based thing more than it is an article, but I'm going to read it anyways. So it says, um, <laughs> this was discussed in Backtack, Backtrack, Track It. I have no idea how to say that word. Discussed in Talk Back Chat. So um, this is what they had to say. It's happy 20th anniversary of the Virtual Boy. And hopefully you guys can see that pretty well. Uh, the Virtual Boy by John Rader. We are celebrating The Virtual Boy. It may have been short-lived, but it certainly left an impact. Celebrate with us by sharing memories of The Virtual Boy. And let's not forget to check out some of the great content that we will be hosting this pretty soon. That was a very short article, but um, it was basically like, like an eight-minute video. I could have did a reaction to it, but there was really no commentary that the guy was talking. It was pretty much quiet the whole time. I'm kind of, kind of glad I didn't do a reaction review to it because it wasn't really much to talk about, to be perfectly honest. But um, it gave me a lot of ideas. Like, if Nintendo were to bring back the virtual button, I did talk about this back in May when I was talking about, I think it was late May, early June of this year, not too long ago. What if the virtual board were to come back again? And I would actually love really really love to actually see that as a um like they do with rob with rob that was a really big japanese like um remote control in 1987 88 89 in the late 80s and um i would like to see them do that again as an amiibo maybe they could make it a tiny little amiibo and as a smash bros character like they did with rob they could put something like virtual boy on on legs 
they probably put him little like robotic legs and robotic arms. It'd pretty much be the red version of Rob. Except he'd have his own little Smash Bros move. <laughs> and um, he'd make little different like noises and features. Maybe he could be like a little mini boss to, you know, dedicate the 20th anniversary of freaking Virtual Boy that came out way back in the early 90s. So, um, pretty huge ass deal that um, Nintendo actually did this about two days ago. This was on August 14th. It's the 16th as I'm doing this. So I'm out two days late, but better late than never. He pretty much showed a lot of the games, which unfortunately I never really get to play. got to play the Virtual Boy unless I was about... I heard about it. My mind's a little blurry. My memory's kind of blurry because I was about six, seven years old when it came out. When it was... Not, came, not coming out, but when it was on this last um, two years of being a unfortunate failed console, but I really, really enjoyed it. I had a few blurred memories of it, but I did like it a lot. I think it was ages six and up or seven and up, but you were able to play it. One of the first video game consoles I ever played in my life, besides NES and PS1, <laughs> along with um, Sega Genesis, of course. But unfortunately, we already know what happened to Sega. But anyways, they might be coming back. Who knows? One of these days, they might. One of these fucking days. Fingers fucking crossed. Anyways, as I was saying before, a lot of their games look like Game Boy Color cartridges for some reason. I don't know why that was, but, you know, that was the 90s for you. You know, it was pretty much the 90s in a nutshell. They had Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Advance SP, um, NES, SNES, Nintendo 64, which, unfortunately, I I sadly never got to own an official Nintendo 64 myself. They're probably cheap as hell. They're probably like 10 20 bucks at the local Goodwill or something. Probably 3 $5 dollars if you're lucky enough to find one. Unless that's pretty much Sega Saturn, Sega Genesis, or NES, maybe. I don't know. If you find it at some type of thrift shop, you are damn well lucky if you're going thrift shop hunting for that. Or if you're going um, on Amazon or eBay, if, it like, if it's like a special custom made edition, it's probably going to be worth the hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars to get your hands on that type of really expensive old school console equipment like that. Since um, obviously a lot of them don't work with HD 1080p cameras, and I might have to do a two-parter in this video. But anyways, see you guys in part two. I will be back with more content.